Welcome again to Educator.com. And this time, for this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to rhetoric. And we're going to talk about not eating an elephant this time, but something else that you have to do when it comes to the elephants. So, the format for this lesson will go like this. First off, what exactly is rhetoric? I've mentioned it before way at the beginning, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail now. Then we're going to talk about fear and higher values. And then you're going to learn how to think yes and yes again, and also hiding your cards. I'll explain what each one of these things mean throughout the, this lesson. So, if you remember way back at the beginning, rhetoric is a use of emotions to motivate and to persuade. So let's think about that really, really great paper that you've written, that logical paper, that one that was argued so well, and you got this idea, and you need someone to believe it. Well, logical, appeal, logical appeals, those really good reasons, those great deductions, those great arguments, you've scrubbed it, and it's 100% fallacy-free, is just not enough, because that only appeals to one half of the brain. Remember, we got two halves, and if you really, really want to get somebody to believe what you believe, or understand what you understand, or agree with you, you've got to appeal to both. And one problem with the logical half of the brain, that left brain, is that it loves to analyze data, it loves information, and it will just keep spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning its wheels, and will never actually commit to anything. Here's imaginary parable. There is a rider on top of an elephant, and that rider is reading a map. Now, you've explained to this rider where you need to go, why going there is important, and all that other kind of stuff. And the rider says, well, I just need a little bit more information before we go anywhere. And then, so you give that rider a little bit more information. You know, instead of just giving them the road map, you give them the topography map so they can see where the mountains and the hills and the rainforest is. And then he says, well, this is a nice map, but I want a little bit more information. And then, so you give the rider more information, and the rider just keeps reading the map. You give him a map in color, and he keeps reading. Now, this rider is still not going to move that elephant. So what do you do? Well, it's simple. Climb down off the top of the elephant, and then you get behind the elephant, and then you whip the elephant. And once the elephant starts moving, well, the rider is going to come along. So persuasion is that process of whipping that elephant to get somebody moving and to get somebody to commit to something and to get someone to be motivated to do something. Now, it's very, very important in any persuasion process to know your audience. And keep so. Knowing the audience, we know that it's actually difficult to change someone's mind. So when we're arguing or attempting to persuade, we want to change it as little as possible. What do I mean specifically about that? Well, it means you don't want to try to persuade them with all the reasons you have and you already believe, but you actually want to find that person's values that they already believe and somehow connect them to your conclusions. 